Welcome to Strip Cover Lit. I'm Dalton Gentry. Hey, um, there's more to that. Don't, don't you have a catchphrase? No, that was literally it. Like, that was, at this point, you say who you I, I'm are. I'm waiting for the catchphrase. And you say who you are. Oh, I thought you were introducing us. No, that's literally, okay, I'm Dalton Gentry. <laughs> this is Jeremy Edwards. This yeah. is Brian Dusky. Uh, and they are for, uh, part of a little program in Kansas City called Shake Shaft Cinema. Uh, these are two filmmakers, uh, good friends of mine for a long time. Uh, who are getting ready to release a new project on YouTube. That's right. A uh, little bit of a project. Do you guys want to tell us a little <laughs> bit about that while I chain smoke because I can? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, we're, we are shooting a episodic uh, Shakespeare series that is uh, basically uh, Shakespeare in uh, modern uh, cinematic sense. Uh, Jeremy, you want to add anything to it? Uh, yeah. Um, so basically the premise of it is uh, it's not the full play. We don't have the time, money, or expertise to like produce full-length uh, features for these yet. Um, but for right now, we're taking scenes that are often uh, least less recognized, um, uh, people aren't as familiar with. We wanted to bring more appreciation to other works in the Shakespeare canon. So. Okay. At least at least less recognized by like the general public. Like Everybody sure. knows yeah. To Be or Not To Be. Everybody knows uh, Balcony Scene from Romeo and Juliet. Like the Shakespeare, I, I, some of the scenes we are doing, I feel like in the Shakespeare crowd, those are not famous scenes, but they're fairly, fairly well known as great scenes. Okay. Um, but uh, you definitely don't see. We made we did our research and we made sure that all the scenes that we did were not scenes that you see often uh, in film, like of the Shakespeare sure. films that have been done. You don't see those ones too often. Okay. So we're going to do a little uh, something different here on Strip Cover Lit today. Uh, we wanted to have these two gentlemen on the channel, introduce them a little bit, uh, and let people know about their project, because I feel like a lot of people who are readers are going to be interested in some Shakespeare work as well. Uh, so I think today we're going to chat a little bit about Shakespeare. We're going to talk about some uh, good lines from Shakespeare, maybe a few words uh, that we believe should come back from Shakespeare. For sure. Uh, and uh, just see where this goes. We're going to have ourselves a little bit of a time. So in regards to Shake Shaft Cinema, which is your guys' film project that will yes. be debuting on YouTube April 26th? April 26th, Shakespeare's birthday and rumored death day. He remembered it. I'm so proud of myself. I, I've done so much <laughs> prep today, I actually took a book off the definitely, shelf. Definitely didn't just give that to you right before we turned I'm very proud that I remembered that. But the fact that, that you remembered you. it after You're that welcome. long amount of time, impressive. It's been at least 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today, and uh, hopefully uh, we may even have a bit of a clip, I believe you said, uh, yes. from uh, one of the oh, films. We have a clip? We'll, a clip. we'll get to that clip eventually. And we're not going to Paul Rudd you. We're not going to throw some random clip of some monkey or whatever in the, its actual clip from the uh, from the picture. I hope it features Paul Rudd as well. I mean, if you guys have pulled that off, I, I'm impressed with you. Well, yeah, Kansas well, City. I mean, it is Kansas City. There's, there's no Paul Rudd. So, Paul Rudd, if you watch this, man, let's let's get you in Shake Shaft Cinema. I like yeah. to hope this and Maybe about $10,000. I, I like to hope Paul Rudd puts himself to bed by watching Strip Cover Lit, but that's <laughs> fine. We'll get there. Thank you. So what inspired you guys to bring this project to Kansas City? What brought this upon you? Um, well, the project originally came back um, from our college days. We all went to Missouri Western together. Me and Dalton were English lit majors together, and then I was a double major, so I was also in the theater cinema department where me and uh, Brian met up. And in my senior year, I did a Shakespeare acting class. And to get um, an extra credit on it, I had to do a film project with it. And so we decided to adapt the scene from Richard III that was ever woman in this humor wooed. And so we went through, we did that. I had a blast with it, modernizing it, trying to make it to where it appealed to a modern audience. That's what we really wanted to do with it. And it was an idea, the f um, film went well. We never really went anywhere with it. The idea always stuck. And so a year ago, two years ago, I approached Brian saying, I really want to revisit this. And we kind of went from there. And we, uh, for years, like shortly after we did that, we kind of just, as friends, kind of discussed films that we would like to see scenes made of. And so I think we both had one specifically that we yeah. were like, okay, we want to do this as a short. And then it was kind of like, wait a why don't we just do a whole series? Like, why don't we just do a bunch? And so two of the episodes, and I think they're probably our two bigger episodes, mm -hmm. um, uh, those ones were included in that, and then we added a few more to uh, make it more interesting. That's right. Completely driven by our egos. That's exactly well, what yeah, That's all of art. And how every good project <laughs> should begin. Uh, so you guys do have some chops. Like you said, we all went to Missouri Western together. Adrian was there with us as well. He's not here today because I can't get him to drive to my home. That's fine. <laughs> I understand it. Uh, but you guys have also performed Shakespeare on stage as well. You've done a few uh, Shakespeare shows? That's right, yeah. Um, we, Me and Brian did Romeo and Juliet together. Um, I was Romeo, he was Juliet. No. Um, I played Benvolio. I wish. 
Uh, I played Benvolio, and uh, that was a terrific one. I was Missouri Western, and then shortly after that, uh, or actually before that, me and Dalton acted in Shakespeare together. We did Much Ado About Nothing, where I played Benedict, and you played uh, Don John. Don John. Always the Don bad John. guy. The this bastard. is the face of a bad man. The face of the bastard. I, the face of the bastard. I like that. I'm going to put it on a shirt. All right, so how are we going to be seeing Shake Shaft Cinema? How is that going to be released? Uh, it will be released on uh, definitely on YouTube. Uh, we... We're throwing around the idea of releasing it on Vimeo as well, um, but the, the main and primary uh, release and, and promotion of it will be on YouTube uh, right. on April 26th. And we were, uh, is it every two weeks? Every two weeks. Yes. So we're, we're starting on April 26th, and then we'll release the next scene every two weeks. And something we're trying to do differently um, with this is, since we are introducing scenes, it's not the full length. Uh, we we created the character of the narrator. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about that, Brian? Yeah, sure. So in in vein of uh, Tales from the Crypt, Twilight Zone, we kind of have an, a narrator introduction to each episode, and uh, the ins that was kind of like the style inspiration, but the uh, purpose inspiration is we a lot of these scenes they take some of them are at the beginning of the of the play, but there's there's a lot of them that are kind of like in the middle or even near the end. Of the play and so we kind of like for people who maybe haven't read the play or maybe need a refresher we want to at least give you some context mm -hmm. to what happened in the moment before the scene starts so you know so it's not just like you were like oh uh somebody died and that's their reaction to death or like you know something like that so we're like they're like i have no idea what's happening right now so at least have some context in the scene and it adds a nice it ties them together and it's a nice little uh, introduction for each piece as well i actually want to back up because we covered my shakespeare on top of like my acting also you know, being English lit, we had Shakespeare classes. Mm -hmm. We went through that a lot of like studying with it and doing film projects. We actually didn't hit any of Brian. Yeah, who the hell are you? He has, he has a lot of uh, history uh, with it too. So, so uh, I I've done a, a, a same thing with Jeremy. My first was doing Romeo and Juliet. I played Mercutio in that play, and that was kind of I'd never done Shakespeare before. I honestly didn't even really think about it that much. Um, that was kind of a, like, oh, this is fun. Um, I really enjoyed it, and. Uh, I hit a point where I was like, I want to do more Shakespeare because legitimately I, I said myself, I was like, I want to do at least three Shakespeare plays within five years because I said, I want to direct Shakespeare. And I feel like somebody who directs Shakespeare should have a lot of experience either performing Shakespeare or at least have an educational background in Shakespeare because it's such a very uh, uh, complex subject matter That's fair. And, and language. And over... I, my plan was just to do like, eh, let's get like three plays in. I've done like six or seven in that time. Uh, I, as an actor, uh, I would say about ninety nine percent of my gigs are Shakespeare gigs. Okay. Uh, I work for Ohio Shakespeare Festival in Akron, Ohio. Um, shout out, greatest company on earth. Um, I always call them the uh, the best Shakespeare company uh, west of the Atlantic. Atlantic is that the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific? Sure. Let's go with yeah, let's go with geography today. Um, so so anyway, but anyway, I worked for them for a lot. We did I did constant works with them. We did not only Shakespeare shows, we did uh, Shakespeare, which was like basically we would we would drink while reading a Shakespeare play in front of an audience, and the audience could tip us to drink more, and which is a great way to learn Shakespeare. It really is, yeah. Is Alcohol helps with Shakespeare. Yeah. And their 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 motto was always uh, don't read Shakespeare because Shakespeare is meant to be performed. It's meant to be. Because a lot of times when you do read Shakespeare, there's there's kind of a, I guess a misconception like a, about a, some of the text and, and things of that and things of that matter. So it's always important to see it performed. Bit of a disconnect. The idea of a live reading where someone will encourage you to drink more and continue your reading that's going to get stored away. That might have to be revisited at some point. They, they do one in Kansas City. Not yes. often. Not, not often. often. But, but yeah, they, 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 those are they, popping they up around there in Atlanta and Kansas City. Yeah. That's well, brilliant. No, no, it's 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 the best idea because we. So when they started doing that, it was going to be just like a little one-off thing they did. Like there's like ah, it's just for fun, whatever. It sold out in 20 minutes, <laughs> and they're like, "We're doing fucking more of this." <laughs> So now More they do it, shows. not just not just for plays. Like they'll do it. They're like, let's just sing Irish drinking songs and like sell beer and have people tip us to drink fucking more beer. That's fine. All and, for the money and the booze. I get it. Yeah, no, it's fan fucking tastic. Like it's it's a great idea. So yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I'm about this. Now I do like the idea of the narrator because not a lot of people read Shakespeare unless you are either in sure. a class or this is something you're passionate about. Uh, you're probably never going to read Shakespeare. Sure. Uh, so that is a great idea. Introduce a little bit of things. Uh, now, we did mention we might have a clip, so hopefully at one point in time I will remember 
maybe this would be a good moment to show a little bit of Shake Shaft Simmons' work. Oh, we have a clip. I heard myself proclaimed by some happy hollow escape the hunt. No port is free, no place that guard and most unusual vigilance does not attend my taking. Okay, and that 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 was a thing. That I was hope a clip. I hope I edited things right because I'm terrible at this. Yeah, sure. uh, but in regards to the literature of Shakespeare, I think we'd like to do a little bit of uh, maybe some line reading today, some favorite lines from sure, Shakespeare. Yeah. If we have some stuff prepped, I, yeah. uh, Brian. Yeah, I'll I'll do a few. Uh, and I'll two. I I chose. I was just going to do three, but I ended up going with four because my first two are super short. Okay. Um, the first and all of them kind of have a specific reasoning behind them. So the first one is not a beautiful line. Uh, it's not poetic. Um, it's just a line that I find hilarious. Um, and a lot of women out there may hate me for it. Um, it is, uh, <laughs> it is, and this, this line is coming from a woman. Do you not know I am a woman? When I think, I must speak. Well done. Yes. Uh, well done. That is from As You Like It. Okay. Um, and as I said, that... The, the context of the line is the line before that is there's a woman talking about her problems and the, and the, and, uh, and Rosalind, uh, keeps interjecting, telling, telling her about her problems. And so her, her best friend Celia is just like, you're not letting me finish basically. And then she, that is her response to that. So it's like, when I think of something, I must say it, which is obviously Shakespeare. Okay. Big, but it's, it's all kind of That's what Shakespeare is famous for though, is very subtle digs that unless you're actually paying attention, to know what's going on. You don't really catch it. To, and, and to me, that line is not so much funny in the situation. It's such, it's, when I hear that line, I think about the writer writing the line yeah. as opposed to like the actual character saying it. So it's just always funny to me from that sense as a writer. Um, uh, this one is, is one of my favorite lines, if not my favorite line of all Shakespeare. Um, <clears throat> also a short one. Um, Stars hide your fires, let light not see my black and deep desires. Um, I think that is, and that is from uh, Macbeth, okay. spoken by Macbeth. Yeah. Um, before he is introduced to any of the evils that he eventually goes down. And I think it's it's something that he sees it within him, and it's almost the holding back of the things that you want and not wanting to show them to the world. And, it's, and it's just, I think it's a beautiful thing to, uh, to show the things you want, but also afraid to actually expose them and that you would, to admit to them. If I may interject, Jeremy's currently looking up lines on his phone right it's now because he totally didn't prepare true. anything. No, I did prepare it. I just he knows, don't want to wanna, wanna butcher he, it. He knows um, what lines he has. He just yeah. he just wants to make sure they're 100% correct. I don't want to uh, butcher the line. Welcome to YouTube. We're going to call you out for everything. And it's stuck <laughs> yeah. on the video now because I don't know how to edit it. Uh, Brian? Fine. So, uh, so now I have another one. Uh, this is a comedic one. Uh, a little bit of a longer one. I will try not to butcher this one because it's not one that I have read myself before. Okay. He that ears my land spares my team and gives me leave to in the crop. I, if I be as cuckold, he's my drudge. He that comforts my wife is the cherisher of my flesh and blood. He that cherishes my flesh and blood loves my flesh and blood. He that loves my flesh and blood is my friend. Ergo, he that kisses my wife is my friend. And I've Shakespeare. Al- yeah, I've always, I've, Shakespeare. Always, I've always loved that line because it's, it's, the, it's the best, it's one of the better payoffs. Because he kind of goes in this thing, you're like, "Where's this going? Where's this going?" And then it has a, it just has a great payoff. And I, and that's just that's from uh, All's Well That Ends Well. Uh, it's just a clown character. It's a guy who comes in to just basically entertain the queen, and he does. Okay, sure. Uh, and that's a good lead in. I'll carry it over here with my lines that I have right here. On I, I have one more, but I can do it later. It's fine. Oh, okay. We'll end with that. Um, no. Uh, so I, I did look it up. I actually just shifted mine. Um, I mentioned it earlier. Um, one of my favorite plays, and I was fortunate enough to get to do it, was uh, Much Ado About Nothing and played Benedict. But the line that I chose was a Benedict line. I actually wanted to switch it over um, because we talk about the fool character. It's a reoccurring character in Shakespeare. It's the comic relief because back in the time, these plays were their entertainment, and they would go on for hours. And so they Shakespeare would put drama in his comedies, and he would oftentimes put comedies, levity into his dramas. Mm-hmm. And um, so in Much Ado About Nothing, there's this great character, Dogberry who is essentially the sheriff of the play. He, um, he comes in, and at one point, 
uh, he is called by Conrad an ass. And so I'll just go from there. Uh, Dost thou not suspect my place? Dost thou not suspect my years? Oh, that he were here to write me down an ass. But masters, remember that I am an ass. Though it be not written down, yet forget not that I am an ass. No, thou villain, thou art full of pi piety, as shall be proven upon thee by good witness. I am a wise fellow, and which is more an officer, and which is more a householder, and which is more as pretty a piece of flesh as any in Messina, and one that knows the law go to, and a rich fellow enough go to, and a fellow that hath had losses, and one that hath had two gowns, and everything handsome about him. Bring him away. Oh, that I had been writ down an ass. And that line That's is right. just hysterical to yep. me that he, he is sitting there proclaiming how he's such a great person and all these great things, and yet continually calling himself an ass. Um, so that one was one of my favorites from that play that's not a uh, Benedict. So um, one of the big famous lines of Shakespeare is Hamlet's uh, soliloquy, if you will. Like, to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is yeah. nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Can you go any further? No. Uh, I've been memorizing <laughs> yeah. while you were talking. It's fine. Uh, but if you move a little bit past that, uh, there's a great bit right there. To die, to sleep. To sleep, perchance, to dream. Ah, uh, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come. Well, when we have shuffled off this mortal coral, must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. So I think, you know, a lot that is always buried in that speech there, but it's absolutely mm. wonderful and doesn't get the attention so it deserves. I, I, I want to interject one thing. Aside from the movie that was named after What Dreams May Come. Yeah. Which uh, is a book, by the way. Yeah, yeah I, I do want to interject one thing quickly, and that's that uh, that is, and this kind of goes along with a, a point I always have about Romeo and Juliet, and, and that's that, that that piece is like so famous. Like mm -hmm. everybody knows at least the first line of it. Um, it's famous for a goddamn reason. Like, because it's so fucking good. Like, it's not just like there's one or two like really good moments. You can take every single line in that, and you can you can legitimately make a point that that's the best line in the play. Like okay. every single solitary line, it, it is fantastic. Uh, it, it's just my, oh, it's fucking my personal cool. favorite is Hamlet's words, 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 <laughs> yeah. which is a line. You can look it up. There's a line where Hamlet says words, words, words. What's the what's the there's the, Hamlet overall has some of the best lines. Like there's another line he says to. Ophelia about uh, oh there's a thought being between maid's legs or something like that um, he's basically joking with her about like yeah how can I can I lay my head in your lap and she's just like no and he goes no I meant like can I rest my head in your lap and she goes no and she goes did you think I meant sexually and she goes no and he goes ah there's a thought to lie between the maid's legs <laughs> uh, Shakespeare's all famous about that I just really just interweaving the text uh, there's always plays on words. There's always comedy to be found, even yeah. within the tragedies. Uh, that's wonderful. Yeah, uh, I mean, in, in, it really is. Even in uh, Macbeth, we um, have the great scene at the end where Macbeth's castle is under siege, and one of his uh, squires, I believe, comes and tells him that uh, that <coughs> they're approaching. <coughs> and before this, Macbeth was going on about geese, and he says they're approaching. And he's like, "What geese?" And he's just like, no, that's... And it, you, you get these little drops. That green-faced loon? Yeah. And you, you get these drops, but you if you're not looking for them, you often yeah. miss them. So my favorite scene from Shakespeare is from King Lear. It's Act 3, Scene 2. It's the storm scene. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. If you get the chance, uh, what, you know, Gandalf. Ian McKellen? Is that his yeah. name? Ian McKellen, yeah. Sir Ian McKellen performs it. It's absolutely wonderful. Sir Ian McKellen, wonderful. if you want to be on Shakespeare Cinema, you just give us a call. We've got time. $10, We've got time. Yeah. Uh, and the, the line uh, that enters that scene, blow winds and crack your cheeks, rage blow you cataracts and hurricanoes spout till you have drenched our steeples, drown the cocks. You sulfurous and thought executing fires, vaunt couriers, oak cleaving thunderbolts, singe my white head. Wonderful line. Okay. And if you actually see somebody like Ian McKellen perform that line yeah. uh, in the, the full storm, it's absolutely gorgeous. So that has always been there's, my favorite. There's yeah, you get the poetry in it. Yeah, you got one more? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so this is one... more. I was just gonna do. More. I was just gonna do three, and then I kind of like started thinking about it, and I added one. This one's interesting. To interject, our scenes when we started this, uh, we we're just like, <laughs> let's do three scenes. Yeah. We'll do three, and then Brian came back. He's like, I really want to do this additional one. Okay, well then we'll do one more. Well, we could do this one as well. We're up to six now. We have six for this season. <laughs> there were so many that we got this rid like, of too. Is, that yeah. We were going to do and whatever. He'll come back. But th this one's interesting because. I like it so much because you can debate whether it was intended to be interpreted the way it is now, 
I think it is. I think that Shakespeare was almost ahead of his time in his interpretation as far as like language goes. Uh, but there's some modern meanings of words here that make it mean something different now. And there's an irony in it. And I'll, you'll see what I mean when I get to it. Uh, this is, uh, I'll just say right now, this is uh, Henry V. Uh, this is read by Pistol. A soulless, egregious dog. O viper vile, the solace is thy most marvelous face, the solace in thy teeth and in thy throat, and in thy hateful things, yea, in thy maw, purdy, and which is worse, within thy nasty mouth. I do retort the solace in thy bowels, for I can take the pistol's cock is up, and flashing fire will follow. I love the line so much, because the entire time he is... He is saying somebody, you're perverted, you're nasty, you're terrible. And then he ends the line with, pistols cock is up. Shakespeare. Yes. It's beautiful. Shakespeare. Now, there's a, now there's a debate that cock did not mean cock at the time. Uh, but I say, the irony is so, like, amazing there that I question that. It <laughs> aged so well. Like, <laughs> and, it's, and it's just great. But, um, yeah. yeah, we'll go on to one of mine. Uh so one of the other ones, and it's actually funny because one of the plays that I don't really care for by Shakespeare is uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. And it's a, a great play, like it has great characters, it has really memorable lines, sure. but it is almost uh, oversaturated in, in a society. Lot a lot of people do it. Uh, yeah. Brian, you've been in it. Um, but there is a line in it that I just love. It's uh, by Helena. Um, and the line, if I can get it right, see, I'm going to do this one from memory. Let's see if I can get it. Um, you're, you're pretty close to what it was from when you said it earlier. Uh, I'll follow you and make a heaven out of hell to die by your hands, which I have loved so well. And it's just a terrific line. It's a very poetic line when read by itself. In the scene, it's a nice, like, capping line to the end of the scene where she is obsessed with another character and is chasing him. And so it's actually inspired by, like, the spell she's under. Yeah. But I think the line on its own stands and speaks a lot. Yeah, the, the play is interesting because it's a play I go back and forth on because I'll read scenes from the plays and I'll be like, God, this is so good. But then I think about, like, the actual overall arc of the play and I'm just like, ah, it's just so lost on me. Because well, it's there's interesting characters and there's interesting moments, but it's it doesn't come together as a full play for me. Okay. What's well, really the brilliance of Shakespeare, though, is a lot of times, like, if you're looking at authors today... Uh, Stephen King writes Stephen King. Every now and then he goes a little wonky, you get the green mile. Uh, but once an author gets into a set genre, that's usually what they follow with. Yeah. Shakespeare was able to just cross any genre he wanted. I can give you comedy, I can give you tragedy, I can give you romance. Anything that you know needed to be done. I can give you terrible history plays that nobody actually reads. And I, and I think that he loved doing the... Uh, this is just my theory, there's no history behind this. I just think he loved doing the drama. I think that was his soul that he loved doing. But the comedies, I think, were so easy for him. Okay. And that, that probably the theater companies that he had worked with, and especially the, the royal family, they wanted that. him to do the comedies more. Because if you look at his comedies, they're the same fucking thing. Like, they run by the same formula. They run by uh, similar... Like, every comedy almost ends with a wedding. Like, that's I found a noodle in my book. <laughs> okay, it's just... Suddenly, it's a good bookmark. I, it might be a low main. Okay. Um, but, like, if you ever, if you ever have the chance... This. If you ever have the chance to read or uh, or watch, um, uh, um, uh, oh god, uh, the complete works of William Shakespeare unabridged, uh, it's a comedy play, and they they bring that up. They they do like a summary of all of his plays, and when they do the comedies, they legitimately break all of this, all the all the plays together, and you realize this is the same fucking play every goddamn time. Well, and I think that also goes to like I, I do think Shakespeare was very passionate about it, what he wrote but he was also this was his job he was out to get paid oh yeah and oh, yeah. um so a lot of these they it was work to him um sure. so i don't know if it was so much as oh I, I just did a drama i just did just did uh history i need to do a comedy now i think it was more like well they really responded well to this yeah and i have this one lined up next to go okay. and uh, it was about the work well it's uh, it, i always make the comparison to, like christopher nolan like christopher nolan there's nothing wrong with like doing Batman films and doing these like very high selling commercial films. Uh, but his thing is I'll make like two of these and then people will start to trust me and they'll know my name. So then I can do the crazy art house picture that I want to do. And because they know who I am, they'll come see it. And so it's like you do two safe bets and then a risk, two okay. safe bets and then a risk. It's like make you, a name for yourself first and foremost. Yeah. It's like if you're running a theater company, it's like, okay, we'll do sound and music. We'll do beauty and the beast. Uh, but then you, you know, we'll do like, uh, Red Light Winter, which, if you've never seen it, is a show about prostitution in Amsterdam. Okay. You know? So it's like you take two safe shows that you know people will come to, 
But then you take a little risk to see if they might come to it. Jeremy, did you have one more? Are you good? Um, I can't have one more. Uh, no, uh, sure. Um, I, I'll actually, I have two. Um, and so I'll do the other much ado um, that I really like. But before that, I mentioned, um, and this was by Ian McKillen as well, and Richard the Third. Well, it's by William Shakespeare, but Ian McKillen did this one as well. He did uh, Richard the Third. It's um, yeah. the Gloucester character. And it's uh, the line is, was ever woman in this humor wooed? Was ever woman in this humor won? And I'm going to stop it there because it's a very long monologue. Um, but uh, it, it was a terrific line because the scene that um, was right before it is the character convincing a woman to marry him, essentially at her husband, which he had killed at his funeral in front of the body. He sat there and convinced her, saying, hey, he brought this on himself. I didn't want to do this, but I love you marry me and it it is really creepy when you read it and this is going back to what brian said where reading it and seeing it is a different thing true um and the character is very much creepy he's doing this for his own intent and there's hubris in that whole monologue it's just drenching with it because he is just so proud of himself for what he has accomplished uh in in that moment um so that one always stands out because that's just such a great line was ever woman in this human wood and then the last one um Going back to Benedict being my favorite character, uh, he has so many great lines, I think, in the whole play uh, to choose one. But one that I always think of, and it's probably because I just recently got married uh, last mm. year, was uh, when I said that I would die a bachelor, I simply meant that I would not live till I were married. And so that one sticks out to me because I really enjoy that one. So, Indeed. Yeah. So... This was, excuse me, audience, because I was looking at my phone. I was not being, not paying attention. I was looking some Shakespeare shit up, and then I realized it was going to take too long, so I just said, fuck it, no, no. never mind. It's amazing. You find something to focus on. Like, when we film on set at Adrian's apartment, there's a can of soup that's been there for all <laughs> three years. And when I'm, like, trying to look like I'm paying attention, but, you know, I'm not, I just read the soup label over and over and over. It's nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. But anyway, this was a little taste of something to come. April 26th, Shake Shaft Cinema will be debuting their first short film in a series of, do we know how many exactly? Six. In a series of six short films. Uh, we will definitely be leaving a... That What's that? We're held to six. Oh yeah, you're stuck We're with it now. Six. It's on the internet. We're fucked. It's on the internet. So we will be leaving a link down below to Shake Shaft Cinema's YouTube channel. Well, please, if you're interested in this, uh, head on over to that channel, subscribe to it, uh, so you can be ready on April 26th when we start debuting videos. And uh, I'm not even going to plug Strip Cover Lit at this point. This is more you guys. So uh, that's what we've got here on Strip Cover Lit. Uh, we may have these two gentlemen back in the future, maybe a little bit something different. Do appreciate you joining us today, and thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.